Um, all right, so we're very happy to have Shashika Peta uh, Mestrega um, here today from LSU. Um, he's currently a, a graduate student and um, he's doing some great work that I think will interest a lot of people in this seminar. Um, we have a lot of people that are interested in partitions and we've seen um, a lot of stuff on uh, congruences. And um, he has some really great work on um, congruences for some families of partition functions that he's been studying. Um, so I'll let you uh, take it from here, Shashika. Uh, you're going to start the recording or? Uh, yes, it's recording. Okay. Um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak here. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, some congruences for some partition functions. Um, maybe I should rephrase my talk title as revisit to acting Gordon and Watson methods uh, to prove congruences because what I'm going to do, I'm going to, what I'm going to show you guys, how we can use their method uh, to prove congruences for fun partition function that we study in this era. Okay, uh, so let's uh, start the definition of a partition function. So partition of n is how many numbers, number of ways you can break down an integer, uh, positive integer. Oh, uh, n. So for an example, partitions of four equals five because we can break down it four and three plus one and two plus two and two plus one plus one and one plus one plus one plus one. So there are four, five partitions of four. So we say P four equals five and the, the the, we have a condition for parts. Parts should be in a ontologically decreasing order and they are greater than or equal to one. And by convention, we take P0 equals one and Pn equals zero for any negative number. Okay. So in 1920s, uh, Ramanujan discovered uh, nice congruences for this partition function. And, and he proved these congruences in uh, multiple ways. Uh, one way to prove con uh, one way he proved these congruences is that specifically the first con two congruences is the modular forms, and then later Watson, Atkin, they use modular forms to prove these congruence. So why we can use modular forms to prove these congruences because of the generating function. So if you look at the generating function of the partition function, and it's a uh, product uh, one over one minus two to the n. This is very close to the uh, dedekind eta function, dedekind eta function. Uh, and it's explicitly it's q to the one over 24 over the dedekind eta function. And this is a negative one half weekly holomorphic modular form on gamma 24. Okay. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about uh, different partition functions that we study uh, in, the, in recent years, we studied recent years. The first one is the irregular partition function. Uh, we call BLN. How we define it, we pose a restriction. The restriction is that now the parts are not divisible by L or irregular partitions. So for an example, P3, B34 equals four because uh, we saw what are the partitions of four, but we cannot take three plus one partition because there's uh, three that we are not allowed to have three in the parts. And again, we can use modular forms to prove and study, uh, study uh, about this function because of the generating function. And this is the generating function of this partition function. And the, uh, in my in the grad school, the first paper that I read is the Lucien Wang result about the uh, congruences for five regular partitions. This is a very nice result. Uh, he used the Rogers Ramanujan continuum fraction uh, to prove these results, and it's a very nice uh, math. And later in 2018, he showed that. The, he showed, he proved the congruences for seven regular partitions. Um, and the, uh, the 
The other partition that I want to talk about is we call LCO partitions. Usually it's called TCOs. So what are LCOs are, uh, this is again a partitions, um, but to define these partitions, I want to discuss about the Young tableau. Uh, for an example, for a partition of seven, let's take uh, three plus two plus one plus one, then we can do, draw the Young diagram. So we have three blocks and two blocks and one block and one block. And then we can calculate the hook numbers. So hook numbers, so each block we can assign hook numbers. Hook numbers is if we go from right to the right or to the, uh, if we go down, then how many blocks we cross. So if we go right and down, then we cross only one block. So this is uh, hook number is one. And if we choose this block, then if we go to the right and go down, then we cross uh, three blocks. So hook number of this block is three and so on. We can calculate the all the hook numbers. So how we define these partitions, the part these are partitions of N where the hook numbers of each block are not divisible by L. So Young tableaus are used in representations of the symmetric function, uh, the uh, SN, um, and, uh, and also they are the uh, co-partitions are used in the theory of crank. Uh, that's another statistic that we can prove congruences. Again, uh, we can uh, study uh, this partition function using modular forms because of the generating function. Okay. And another partition that I want to talk about is the K colored generalized Frobenius partition function. This function is introduced by George Andrews in 1984. Um, these are two array partitions. So, and the, and the parts are in a monotonically decreasing order. And the parts now we can have, uh, for parts we can have uh, non-negative integers. Um, and it satisfying the partitions of, and we can satisfy this condition. And D is the number of term or number of columns in this two array. And here, uh, n is equal to the number of columns plus the sum, summation of the entries in the rows. And the parts, uh, if we talk about k color generalized Frobenius partitions, uh, the parts can be appeared at most k, k times on each row. And we can color the part, uh, parts and we can color the numbers. Then we can order the, uh, the colors in a decreasing order in each row. So to illustrate this, let me uh, calculate the two color generalized Frobenius partitions of two, uh, it's nine. Uh, why it's nine? Because um, we can have uh, uh, two equals one plus one. So we have one and zero, and then we can choose different colors. So we have uh, four partitions. And then we can switch the rows. So again, we have uh, four partitions. And then uh, we can also uh, do uh, two, two equals two and zero plus zero. So entries are zeros. But now we have two columns, but uh, we can color the, par uh, the parts in two colors. Uh, but the parts should be in decreasing order. So we have another option. Um, so why we can, uh, again, we can use modular forms to study this partition because of the generating function. So if you look at this side and here, this is, a, this is actually a generalization of theta function. So it has modular properties. Later, I'm gonna talk about these properties. Okay. Uh, some, um, notable results about these partitions uh, in the 1990s. Um, Frank Garvin, uh, Dong Chu Kim, Denis Stanton, they, uh, they used uh, TCOs and to uh, find the statistics for cranks uh, to prove the congruences for uh, partition function. 
and 1997 Kenono, uh, he related four core partitions to class numbers of the imaginary quadratic fields. Um, and again, in 1998, uh, Kenono, he, he uh, relate the partitions as distinct parts. So these are, we can also call two regular partitions to elliptic curves. And in 2000, uh, Jeremy Lovejoy and David Penniston, they um, relate to regular partitions and modular K3 surface. Um, in 2014, there's uh, Frank Darwin, James Sellers, they uh, proved congruences for uh, generalized Frobenius partitions with arbitrary number of colors. In 2020, um, Roland, Zachary, and Wagner, they proved congruences for K-colored uh, K-colored partitions, uh, but I haven't defined it. Uh, I'm going to define it very, uh, in my next slide. Um, so to study all of these partitions, uh, I'm going to study this partition. This is the generating function. Uh, this, uh, if you look at the generating function, it's very really similar to the generating function of the partition function, but we have additionally uh, this part and there's a uh, to the power C. Um, and this C and D's are, can be any integers, uh, and at least a prime. Mm. Okay, so now we can pick C's, D's to get uh, the partitions, uh, the partition that I previously defined, uh, mentioned. For if we plot T equals zero, then we get the generating, the generating function of the C color partitions that I mentioned before. Um, and if we plug C equals one and D equals minus one, we get regular partitions. Um, again, if we take C equals one and D equals minus L, we get L co-partitions. So by studying uh, this partition function, we can study all of these partitions and also they call it generalized Frobenius partitions. Okay. Um, this theorem, this is again Lucian Bang theorem result in 2016. And he, uh, he, he proved the congruences for the, this partition function when L equals 11. And um, in his paper, this is actually the second paper that I read in, uh, in, my, in grad school. Uh, and he mentioned that uh, it's possible to obtain all uh, congruences for all seeds and Ds, uh, but he proved these three congruences separately. So uh, my objective was to find a unified way to prove all congruences. Um, that's actually the we proved uh, that result in 2019, and we also in 2020, we proved this result for uh, all of these primes, 5, 7, 11, 13, and 17. Uh, and this is the congruence. Um, and there are some numbers. This ARL is tracking the highest power that is divisible by uh, the, the uh, this by L. And also in ARL satisfying uh, this congruence, um, and this ARL uh, is only depend on R and L and these C's and D's, and we can calculate it explicitly. Um, let me demonstrate that uh, with example. So this is a example. This is what we can prove using our theorem um, for uh, C equals uh, three and D equals minus three and L equals 17, uh, we, we, can, we can calculate in RL, that's equals minus two, and we can calculate ARL uh, explicitly, that's R, so we have this congruence. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Yeah, I have a question. Um, so numerically on the computer, for other primes, bigger than 17, do you expect that there are similar congruences like this? Or is it 
you, you can only prove it for one prime at a time, or is this all the congruences that you think exist? I, I think exist, and uh, the, I will explain you what's the problem that we have to prove the congruences for other primes uh, because of the, we have to construct and basis for uh, modular functions on gamma naught L for other primes. Um, and I will explain you uh, how we prove it for uh, primes 11 and 17, then you will see the struggle we have. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so to, to prove these congruences, we need modular functions on gamma naught 10. So gamma naught 10 is a congruent subgroup of S cell P. So these are the matrices, uh, so let's find this relation. Here, the Cs, the C1, C is, is a multiple of N. And modular function on gamma naught 10 sat satisfied these conditions. It's a holomorphic function on the upper half plane, and it satisfy this transformation property for, for any um, matrix on gamma naught 10, and if it's holomorphic at cusp. We also need the U operators. A U operator, you can define for any Lorentz series. Uh, UP, uh, would we define it? We collect all the terms with the Q exponent of Q divisible by uh, P, and then we uh, cut, we divide the exponent by P. And there's a nice property of U operators. So if you have another uh, Lorentz series, let's call G tau. And then if we take the U operator F tau G P tau, then we can pull out G tau. It's a very important and very nice, useful property. And we also need a theorem, Dwetkin and Lehner. Uh, if tau is a modular function on gamma naught 10, and if we squared divides n, then you P F tau is a modular function on gamma naught 10 over P. Um, and we also need modular equations. So before explaining about the modular equation, let me, uh, we need two class of uh, modular functions. We call GL tau and phi L tau. Uh, GL tau um, is uh, eta L tau, eta tau to the power RL, where RL is the minimum positive integer satisfying this congruence. Um, so I have listed all GL tau and PL tau here uh, for these primes. Um, so modular equation, we mean an algebraic equation connecting those two, uh, those two modular, for modular functions. So for prime five, the equation connecting this modular fu function and this modular function and so on. Um, modular equation are known for a very long time now um, so it's a, uh, so for example, it, uh, when L prime equals five, we have this model of equation. It's a degree five equation of phi phi tau and modular equation for prime seven, we have this equation. It's a degree seven uh, of phi seven tau. And we also have modular equation for prime uh, 13. Um, now, uh, now uh, we actually in our paper we proved the this modular equation using modern techniques. Uh, so, for an example, uh, for for prime five, uh, we have if you consider two modular uh, functions phi phi tau and g phi phi tau. So these are modular functions on gamma naught twenty five. And we know gamma 25 uh, modular curve is not 25 has six cusps, uh, zero infinity in these cusps. And now we can use a theorem on uh, the web of modularity uh, to calculate the order of vanishing at the cusp of these modular functions. Uh, using this theorem, we calculated all the order of vanishings. And then uh, we consider one over G five, uh, five Z. So if we look at that, and then from the table, we can see that it has only a pole of order five at infinity, 
and then using this one over phi five power powers, we can remove this pole. So to remove the order five pole, we can uh, subtract one over phi five to the power five tau, and then we left with order four pole. Then we can su subtract uh, this term to remove that pole, and then eventually we'll leave with a uh, modular function, uh, polymorphic function on the complex plane, so it's a constant. So that's how we prove the modular equation in our paper. Um, okay. Uh, now we need to define another modular function. Uh, let's call it SRL tau. Uh, this is, uh, so from the atkin liner theorem, we see that this is a modular function on gamma naught L. Um, and this function uh, has been studied by Watson and Atkin uh, to prove congruences for partition function and colored partition function. Um, what we did additionally is we define it for any integer. Um, so again, we can modify uh, the modular equation to ex uh, ex explain it, uh, obtain explicit uh, series for these uh, modular functions. And uh, we know that for these primes, the, the modular curve has genus zero. So there's uh, one single generator. And that generator is GL because it has um, a zero, one simple zero at infinity. So we can write down it's, uh, it's uh, we can write down for each, um, L, uh, for, for any integer R, we can write down SRL tau as a uh, Lorentz series of GL. And then we are interested about the uh, divisibility uh, of these coefficients. So uh, let's call phi L A with the elliptic order of this number A. Now uh, we can uh, prove uh, inequalities that relate the elliptic order of these coefficients. These, um, these inequalities are known for a really long time, but only for positive r. But here we proved it for any uh, integer r uh, using induction. And uh, also there's a, an inequality for um, uh, the 13, okay? Uh, now let's consider a linear transformation we called uh, T lambda. And let's, let's uh, uh, take a modular function on gamma naught there. And let's consider this linear transformation. Since phi L, we know it's a modular function on gamma naught L squared. So when you take the UL operator, we have a modular function on uh, gamma naught L. So we can write down uh, T lambda GL mu in terms of GL uh, mu. GL as a power of GL, series of GL. And then we define this theta L lambda mu uh, quantities uh, as one if all the uh, coefficients are divisible by L. If at least one coefficient is not visible by L, we call theta L lambda mu equals zero, okay? And uh, we can find all these theta L lambda mu for these primes. Um, to, but uh, to find it, we need some recursive relations. Um, so let's consider the uh, phi five lambda plus five, G five mu, uh, the U operator phi. Then we can use the property that I mentioned when I defined the U operators uh, to uh, get this part. And then therefore, uh, theta uh, lambda plus phi u comma mu is, should be the same as theta lambda comma mu. And we can do this similar thing for uh, phi phi lambda and g phi plus one. Then if we again use the property of the u operator, then we can get this part. So uh, we have these two rec recursive relations. Then we just need to calculate uh, one value of 
uh, lambda and mu and calculate the theta lambda mu, then we can use these recurrence recursive relations to calculate all theta lambda, lambda mu values. And we can do the same thing for uh, other primes, prime equals seven and also prime equals 13. And interestingly, when uh, 13 case, we have uh, one instance where uh, theta lambda mu values equals one. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, now let me talk about what happened with the prime uh, 11 and 17. Um, so prime 11 case uh, has been I mean, done by Gordon in 1981. Um, how he did it, he uh, actually Atkin constructed a basis for the vector space of modular functions on gamma naught 11, and then Gordon modified it. Uh, and this basis satisfying these conditions uh, and uh, this of this form. Um, but he then he, um, since these are modular functions on gamma naught, uh, gamma naught uh, 11, so he can write down using the basis. So then he used, he proved, uh, uh, the 11 addict order of these coefficients satisfy this inequality. And then using a similar method that I explained uh, with prime five, he obtained some because relations among these theta lambda mu values, and then he calculate all the theta lambda mu values using the relations. Um, and for prime 17 case, it's done by, it's done by, a, um, uh, Kim Hujas in 1991, uh, he again constructed a basis for the vector space of modular functions on gamma naught 17. And this basis are uh, of this form. And uh, then he again used a similar approach to Gordon uh, to, uh, to express it as a, uh, to obtain uh, inequality that relate the semantic orders of the coefficients and then he obtained recursive relations, and then he calculate these all theta lambda mu values. Again here, notice that there are very small cases where theta lambda mu values equals one. Okay. Uh, now what we need to do, we need to construct uh, modular functions that, that generate of a partition function. So uh, this has been used in many places so let's call, let's take LLCD0 tau B1 and uh, let's define LLCD1 tau be the UL VL tau, uh, but this is one, but we'll write one in this way because we want to get the um, our generating function. So if we expand VL tau, then we can see that we have the generating function the, uh, here. So now we can use the uh, property of U, U operators to get this form. And here uh, there are N1L and U1L, I'm gonna talk about that later. To go to the, uh, the higher powers, we can define uh, LLCD2 tau be this one. Um, and to go to the more higher powers, we can define uh, LLCD R tau recursively this way. Um, here, lambda R minus one uh, is lambda R is C if R is even and D if R is odd. Then if we, uh, we can write down the expansion and there are still this N2 RL and U2 RL uh, and we have to calculate. But we can calculate it uh, easily because we know these are uh, satisfying recursive relation. So we can obtain recursive relations among into R minus one L and into R L, then uh, we can calculate it. Uh, it's actually a geometric sum. Um, then we can also calculate uh, using similar method, uh, the mu to R L and mu to R. And this AR then is just the sum of all these theta lambda I mu, well, mu I values. And uh, we also put in naught equals zero. And then the idea is 
uh, proving uh, this inequality. I mean, you need to prove Ladic orders of uh, this series is greater than or equal to KRL. And I'm not going to talk about that since it's a little bit technical. Uh, now let's see how we can use this to prove congruences. Uh, for five regular partitions, uh, we know our C equals one and D equals minus one. So we can calculate lambda I values. It's one and minus one. One if I is even and minus one if I is odd. And then we can use it uh, to calculate the mu I values. These are zeros and one. Then we can use the table to calculate theta lambda mu values. So in this case, we have theta pi minus one, uh, one equals zero and theta phi one zero equals one. Then it's just this, if you, if you add to our times, it's uh, uh, R, one, uh, R of ones. Um, so we can also calculate the into R uh, and that uh, therefore we have this congruence, which is exactly the same as the congruence that uh, Vance proves in 2018, 2017. Um, we can also calculate the congruences for five co-partitions. In this case, C equals one and D equals minus five. And so let we have lambda I values and mu I values. So we can use that to calculate um, theta lambda mu values. And then uh, we can see that in this case, both are one. So we are, if we add R times, this is equals R. And in this case in R equals minus one. So we have this congruence. Uh, we can do the same thing for theta in regular partitions. Uh, in this case, lambda i equals one and uh, one if i is even and minus one if i is odd, and mu i values zero and seven. And then we can calculate using the table theta lambda mu values, but it's all zeros. So a to r is zero. So that's mean for each integer r, there is at least one M satisfying this incongruence. Uh, but it's very interesting uh, for uh, this case, when R equals one, I calculated first 29 uh, values of this uh, 13 regular partitions, but all these values are not divisible by zero. So they're not divisible by 13. So, I think we should be, we, sh we should, if we, if we are careful, if we are careful, we should be able to prove uh, congru incongruences for all n. Uh, we can find uh, arithmetic progression that the 13 regular parties are not congruent, not uh, congruent to zero mod 13 on that arithmetic progression. Uh, and I also calculated uh, when uh, 13 to the power one case, and we, I calculated all uh, first 384 values, 300 and only eight cases uh, we have, it's congruent to zero, it's zero mod 13 that are divisible by 13, but all other values are not divisible by 13. So there should be a, I think there should be a way that we can prove, we can find arithmetic progression that, uh, this, these partitions are not divisible by 30. Um, now, let me talk about the K color generalized Frobenius partitions. So we can multiply the, the generating function uh, with this product both sides, then this K, let's call AKQ be the, this part. Uh, this is, uh, as I said before, this is a generalization of theta functions and uh, bang, uh, Chen, Wang, and Yang in 2018, they studied this function and they proved that for, for uh, K odd, uh, these functions are actually belongs to weight K minus one over two modular form on gamma naught K with this character. And then they can uh, use, uh, in, they use that fact to obtain different representations of the uh, K colored Frobenius uh, 
the color generalized Frobenius partitions for different k's. So k equals five, they obtain this, these relations, uh, this uh, two uh, representation. And, but this is, uh, but these are these cases we can use our result to calculate the, we can relate these to our partition function. So that's what we did. And then we can study the congruences for these partition functions. Uh, these are these congruences. Then we just need to combine to get congruences for five colored generalized Frobenius partitions. That's uh, we did in our paper. Uh, and uh, not only for five, they obtained uh, representation for seven, 11, and 13, and so other, other cases. But in these cases, we can, uh, we can relate all these parts to uh, parts to our partition functions in different different cases. So that's what we did, and we showed that uh, satisfying these congruences and also satisfying these incongruences. Um, any questions so far? I have uh, maybe a few more slides. Okay. Um, now let me explain to you about my current work. Um, in 2012, Folsom, uh, Kent, Ono, um, they studied these generating functions for the partition function. In this case, uh, we have the C is equals one and D equals zero. And these are the generating functions. And they showed that when R uh, bigger than or equal to M squared, these generating functions are belongs to a C over LMC module with rank, uh, rank with uh, less than or equal to flow uh, L minus one over 12. So for example, when L equals five, seven and 11, uh, this uh, uh, the rank is equal to zero. So, uh, so we have the congruences, but we don't have congruences for prime 13 because the rank in this case, uh, this, this side is one. And this has been uh, studied further by Boylan and Webb in 2012. Uh, they define the, the module um, so let me call this module lambda L odd BM to be the, uh, these are all generating functions modulo L to the M where beta uh, is uh, congruent to B mod two and uh, for any for any B uh, odd number. And we can also define uh, even modules. And what they have shown is, uh, they have shown that there's an integer BLM positive integer satisfying this these relations. This, um, these modules are satisfying this, this inclusion uh, result and they are like, um, eventually these modules are stabilized. And they calculated the uh, bound for the rank of this stabilized module, this is the bound. And they also uh, proved that this BLM uh, under some conditions, we can take BLM equals to M minus one. And similar result true for the uh, even modules. And uh, this has been extended to see color partition by uh, Belmont, Lee, Musart, Tribert Leder in 2016. Uh, they showed that uh, similar result, uh, but in these cases, this stabilized module is the we can take the rank as the dimension of the cusp forms uh, with the with this weight uh, minus this term. And uh, what we did, we defined the uh, the modules similarly, but uh, here we have to add this these. Uh, and we what we showed that when C comma D bigger than or equal to two and L bigger than or equal to three plus C plus D, then it satisfies the similar property. And these uh, the, is also the modules eventually stabilize. This module has this rank. Um, and, uh, and, 
uh, in this case, we only showed it for C comma D bigger than or equal to two. Uh, currently, we are working on how to prove uh, this for when C or D a negative number. The struggle we have is we cannot define the sequence of modular function usual way because we will, will have negative uh, Q powers. So we cannot talk about the, we cannot use the properties of uh, modular function modulo prime powers. Uh, modular forms, modulo, because we are talking about modular forms on SL to Z. Uh, but we have ideas about uh, how do we have ideas about defining defining these modular functions, uh, sequence of modular functions, different ways uh, to tackle this problem. So we're still currently working on it. Uh, let me illustrate uh, with, uh, with two values, when C equals two and D equals five and L equals 11, uh, we have the rank of the stabilized module as the dimension of cusp forms with weight 30 and this quantity, so this is equal zero. So we should have congruence. So now let's use our first theorem to illustrate this. So when C equals two and D equals five and L equals 11, we can calculate these lambda I values and mu I values, and then we can calculate these theta values uh, and in R values. So we can see that A to R equals R so we have a congruence. So that's mean, um, that's mean our result works. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thanks, Shashika, for a very nice talk. Uh, any questions? Um, yeah, any questions for our speaker? Yeah, I had a couple of questions, actually. Um, so the first one, so throughout your talk, you always took L from this list of odd primes. Yeah. Is there any hope or, or direction where you could try to take, say, L equals four? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, so, yeah, I will, uh, how, I mean, yeah, I, I think this can be done for those cases like four or six or other cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I haven't tried. Okay. Uh, I think so the reason that's I ask is, yeah, yeah, that's but, a, that's. I think with four, you end up with like divisibility of class numbers, things like this. Yeah. No kind of pressure. So that would be nice. Yeah. The other question was, um, do any of these come with combinatorial proofs, or are, are there ideas of how one might prove these combinatorially? Um, that's also an interesting question, um, and actually. Um, these like congruences, uh, I mean, the five regular uh, four partitions and uh, the re results about the five, the co partitions and regular partitions and generalized Frobenius partitions are uh, proved using combinatorial methods. Anyways, we can prove this, uh, but I haven't tried like, uh, I haven't. Uh, Mm. Prove these. Uh, yeah. Haven't tried proving congruences for this partition function using combinatorial methods. Okay, cool. Thanks. Other questions? Okay. Well, if not, let's uh, thank the speaker again. And uh, I'll end the recording here.